SpaceX is planning on taking humans to Mars, current public plans saying by the year 2024. Is this something that they can actually really accomplish? I'm Ben Pearson, the Rosa Tracker, and today we're going to track through the different issues on seeing if this is something that's actually realistic. Now, I've done a whole bunch of videos that have covered most of these things in a little bit more detail. If you take a look below, you can see where some of these are. So just be aware of that, that I probably have something more to talk on this subject if you need to. But let's start breaking this down one at a time. The biggest obstacles that we have to getting to Mars is the ability to launch large payloads from Earth. Starship should be able to do that, and quite frankly, Falcon Heavy can even launch a fairly large payload from Earth. So they probably got that one covered. So score one SpaceX. The ability to bring those large payloads to Mars. This is something that SpaceX is having some challenges with, but they're currently working with NASA actually to be able to demonstrate the use of cryogenic fuel transfer in low Earth orbit. If they can pull that off, this won't be an issue at all. They'll be able to get 100 tons launched towards Mars, no problem. Number three is landing heavy payloads on the surface of Mars. This is a major obstacle. Do I think they can do this by 2024? Yeah, I think they will be able to. They have more research in the technology to land things on Mars for really heavy payloads than anybody, including NASA, has. Now, NASA has a wealth of experience of landing things on Mars, but they tend to use a rather complex system that involves a heat shield, parachutes, rockets going down the final bit of the way, and sometimes sky cranes and airbags just to put a little bit of variety in there. But they have this whole huge complicated system. Landing any really heavy payload on Mars, though, a parachute becomes just totally impractical. They're already reaching the very limits of that with the Curiosity rover and the Mars 2020 rover that will soon be named. But SpaceX's approach to using rockets will work. It's the simplest thing. The heat shield, there's nothing wrong with that, and that kind of tends to scale as well. So SpaceX has more practice firing rockets in this critical realm where they're going supersonic and they're firing into the direction that they're going. They have more experience with this than anybody else on the planet. And I think they'll be able to pull this off. Now, will they be able to do it by 2024? Well, maybe. It's probably going to take a little bit of practice. I'm certain that they'll be able to land something on Mars by 2024. But whether or not this will be something safe enough for humans, I don't think I can really say that right now. Next, let's start talking about some of the extra technologies that they're going to have. SpaceX will need to scout around the area of their landing site beforehand. They're planning to use in situ resource utilization to manufacture rocket fuel to be able to take the spacecraft back home. In order to do that, they're going to have to have a fairly good idea of the resources that are around the landing site there. Quite frankly, SpaceX does not have this kind of experience to be able to analyze the geology of something. They're going to have to partner with somebody. Now, NASA does have this experience, so if they could partner with NASA, they could probably scout out the landing site very, very effectively. They could do something where, you know, SpaceX provides the rocket to land there and NASA provides the rovers to go examine things. They'd have to find a way to reduce the cost somewhat, but this is something that's entirely possible. Another major concern is the food. Now, for a mission to Mars, in order to allow for a gap of two years where you're not able to launch home for some unknown reason, you would have to have about five years of food brought with you when you're launching. That is a lot of food, and the way that they tend to make food in space is to have it pre-made on Earth, and they just kind of reheat it, and that has a limited lifespan for the storage there. We haven't ever really done any cooking in zero gravity, although astronauts are currently planning on baking some cookies in space using a special space oven. This is something that I think can be figured out, but there again, SpaceX doesn't have the experience with this. NASA does. So hopefully they can get this figured out between the two of them and they can make it work. Communication satellites. Now, 
NASA has a few communication satellites that are around Mars in the form of imagers that have extended missions that are able to do relays. But if we're on Mars, we're probably going to want to be able to talk to our astronauts at least once every couple of hours. And we really don't have enough satellites that are there. SpaceX has the Starlink satellites that could potentially do something like this, but they really haven't demonstrated the capability to transmit that far, and they're still a fairly new technology. This is something I think SpaceX could probably solve, but there again, they're going to need some experience with NASA to pull this off. If nothing else, NASA has the Deep Space Network. They have the Deep Space Network that's the envy of the world, that they, other nations will come to us to use our, our network. SpaceX, when they were planning on landing Red Dragon on Mars, they were going to use this network to be able to make it happen to do the communication. So I think that NASA and SpaceX could partner together to figure this out, but there are some interesting challenges there. Radiation protection. I don't think this is a huge concern. I think that Starship being as large as it is will allow it to carry a lot of extra mass and much of that mass could be used as radiation protection So it shouldn't be too much of a problem once you get to the surface of Mars You can use your habitats You can put some radiation shielding on there to help protect it even more and this really shouldn't be that difficult How about zero gravity? This one unfortunately, there's not really a lot we can do without actually sending humans there we know from experience from the International Space Station that about eight to nine months, there's not really any huge effects of zero gravity. But beyond there, we don't really know. Now, how will Martian gravity affect these? We really don't know. And I, there isn't really a good way to do that. You cannot live in one third of a Earth's gravity for any length of time. There's no way to do that without being in space and, you know, we'd have to set up a giant centrifuge at huge, huge cost. I think the astronauts would probably be okay, though. They'll have enough exercise on Mars where they'll probably be relatively okay. Now, when the astronauts first land on the surface of Mars, they're probably not going to be getting out of their spacecraft in the first few days. They probably will need to acclimate to the gravity there on Mars to make everything work. Bottom line is... I feel that if SpaceX today had the support of NASA in terms of the spacecraft to explore the surface of Mars, in terms of communication satellites, stuff like that, that they could do it, no problem. Also, if they were willing to risk the humans landing on Mars without doing a really huge amount of testing. Now, did we test when humans landed on the moon? No, not really. But Mars is harder to land on than the moon, and it probably warrants some testing. Personally, what I feel that this is going to happen, I think in 2022 that SpaceX is going to launch one or two starships towards Mars. These are going to be more demonstration-type missions to show that we can do this entire mission end-to-end. -end. Once that happens then they will have the ability to request whatever funding that they need to make this happen. They'll be able to go to NASA and say, hey, please give us some money, give us some equipment to be able to make this mission work. And they'll be able to do that. Now, in theory, SpaceX is going to start taking tickets to head to the first mission on Mars pretty soon, and so we'll find out relatively soon. They said that once they achieve orbit, that's when they're going to start taking these orders. But I don't think that NASA is going to be too willing to do too much funds into it until they've actually demonstrated they can land on Mars. When Red Dragon was planning on heading towards Mars, nobody really had any payloads for it, even though it was a free trip to the Red Planet. So SpaceX was just going to kind of do its own thing in there. And I have a feeling that Starship will be something fairly similar for the first mission. There'll probably be some people, though, who are willing to do some stuff. So I think in 2022, they're going to launch a demo mission. They're going to get more funds. In 2024, they're going to launch two to three starships that are going to really help to get the ground prepared so that in 2026, with a landing date of 2027, we can actually send humans to Mars. And I think that that's 
probably what's more realistic to happen. Nothing has been officially said, though, and quite frankly, these plans change, at least to public knowledge, every few weeks anyways. But the 2024 date to land humans on Mars has been pretty consistent for a while. I'm really interested to see how all of this works out. It is a really exciting time to be a space fan. Thank you guys much for joining me. Let me know what you guys think is the largest obstacle that SpaceX has to landing on Mars. And until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.